Okay, this is going to sound like something out of science fiction, but U.S. researchers are pushing to study how to dim the sun. This is part of a radical new effort to fight the increasingly dire effects of climate change. Joining us this morning is the director of the Global Environmental Politics Program at American University, Simon Nicholson. Good to have you with us. Nice to be with you. Thank you. Um, now, this is not your project. This is a project that is being looked at by the uh, National Sciences National Academies of Science, sorry, but you're going to explain for us. There are three methods scientists are considering to dim the sun. I, I didn't even know this was possible, but this is what they're looking at. How do they work or how could they work? Yeah, the basic idea here is that um, one way to respond to climate change might be to try and reflect some amount of incoming solar energy back into space. Um, and the way to do that is the way to do to, the way to do this is to make some aspect of the planet shinier, right? Mm. Um, there are lots of different potential methods uh, for this. Um, a couple that looked at in the report are what's called marine cloud brightening. You can see that in the graphic that you just put up. Um, the idea here is to make clouds over the ocean more reflective, brighter, by artificially injecting salt water from the ocean up into those clouds. Hmm. Um, and then another proposal, which is on the table, um, again, displayed in this graphic that you've put up, is called stratospheric aerosol injection. Um, this would be putting reflective particles high up into the Earth's atmosphere to reflect, again, incoming solar energy. If a government were to move forward with something like this, would the effects be limited to the country that's participating? I think, you know, if the U.S. tries this, we're right next door here in Canada. Uh, who is all affected? And are the effects global, in fact? Yeah, something like marine cloud brightening might have regional effects, um, but almost certainly an effort like that could not be contained within an individual country. Um, stratospheric aerosol injection is, by its nature, if it were used, a global um, effort, and that would have global implications. Um, and so I think in, inherent in the question that you're asking is this need for international cooperation and conversation about these things. Yeah, well, because we know clouds move, right? They're not going to just stay in, in one spot. That's Dimming right. the sun could have consequences for everything, I mean, for everything, from crops to mental health. Can you explain more for us some of the concerns that are raised around this proposal? Yeah, I, think, I think the first thing to say is that um, these things sound like science fiction. Um, they sound like wacky ideas that could be devastating. Uh, but so is runaway climate change, right? So the reason that these things are being looked at at all is because they might offer, if they're utilized um, in, in an effective um, and cooperative fashion, they might offer a small piece of the response that we need for climate change. But um, there are downside risks. Yeah, and in fact, I, I love how you phrase this. You said if, if we're even looking at solutions like this, it means we have failed in our efforts on climate change. Yeah, that's right. I mean, most, most technologies that we talk about are, are, are hopeful, right? Um, they're, 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 they're generated by human aspiration. Um, but when it comes to something like this, we're talking about um, defensive technologies that would only be utilized if the world just can't get its act together in other ways to deal with climate change. If any of these measures were to be implemented, are any of them reversible? You're talking about spraying things, you know, like an air, a reflective aerosol or, or injecting clouds. Can we come back from that? Yeah, I mean, so if, 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 um, if salt water were to be introduced into the cloud layer, for instance, it would fall out in a matter of days or weeks, right? And so if bad effects were seen, then something like marine cloud brightening could be stopped potentially very quickly. Um, stratospheric aerosols hang around for up to 18 months, maybe two years. Um, and again, uh, these, these aerosols would then fall out of the sky, and so a program could be stopped. Um, the challenge here is that if you start a program, then chances are it's going to be continued um, because all you're doing with something like this is dampening a warming effect. This is not actually solving climate change, mm. right? Because solving climate change means stopping uh, greenhouse gas pollution going into the atmosphere in the first place. Simon Nicholson, it is a fascinating uh, look at a possibility and also, you know, an extreme measure being taken because of the effects of climate change that we are living in right now. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. A pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.